It's a podcast from Steam. How would you ref? It's the Benitarium. Bunny Bennett, isn't it a day on the Benitarium? It's the Benitarium, and it's starting right now. That's <laughs> uh, you should have done it like a back to the same note at the whatever. I didn't. Okay. Mm. Hey, everyone. Welcome to uh, the 19th episode of the <gasps> Benetarium podcast. 19, you say? 19. That means uh, next will be 20. My favorite number. And previously will be 18. And if the one before that would have been 17. If anyone's been paying attention uh, to past streams or whatever, or you know my likes... Uh, internet points for you if you know why 19 is a cool number and why I like the number 19. I don't even know why, so... <laughs> it's a nerdy reason, I guess. Uh, so more on that in a bit, I guess. <laughs> when, people, <laughs> when people inevitably ask the question on the Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> what's, why is your... Uh, uh, tweet me if you know why I like 19. So today, it's just uh, David Michael Bennett and Chelsea Paniak. Uh, I play the spine in Steam Powered Giraffe. And Chelsea... And I play Walter Worker Chelsea. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Bunny wanted to take a break this week. Uh, and we don't want to cancel the venetarium because I, I like if i have the energy i'll keep it i'll keep it going but this one's going to be a little laid back we've um, only missed one and it's because you and were it's definitely I, I Ill. Was sick. so basically <laughs> we can do it as long as i'm up for it because since because we do it for my apartment all the equipment i'm the one that knows how to set it all up so uh mm. and you know i guess we teach someone else but i don't know i look so <laughs> on the video i look so washed out and dead <laughs> i don't know uh, if it's just the screen i mean, I mean it could be the camera we're using a different camera today I need a little bit of um, color on my lips but uh, it's also because the light's usually above us, shining down. And now it's like directly on us, and I don't think the white balance is quite quite right. I didn't read this camera doesn't have auto white balance, so I just kind of guessed. And this one looked the best, <laughs> <laughs> like of what natural is. But I don't know. It's this. It might be a might be a little too high, too blue. But I don't know. It still looks yellow. We only have one light. <laughs> Anyways, only engineer, engineer tiers are seeing the light, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, the camera we're using right now, actually, is a second one we picked up uh, for our uh, live YouTube concerts, which will oh be happening boy. in uh, this month, probably. I, I don't, we, don't, we don't have a date to set, but one, Stay tuned we'll hopefully give you at least a that. week notice before we do the actual um, show. But uh, we're we're doing testing this week and whatnot, building a, uh, a a PC specifically for the stream, so we don't have to like take away our recording computer or, or any of our other computers. So yeah, uh, real cheapo mm -hmm. one. I think it's under like five hundred bucks too. So real real simple thing we can just do. We could also use a laptop, but we want the security of like a desktop that has the yeah. built-in PC PCI Express interface and stuff. So we have expansion. Mm. So we should have about three camera angles. Uh, and we're just, I'm just, I decided to use one of the cameras. It's not as good as the other ones, but, uh, it looks pretty decent. First time using it. We're using it. the same lens as we use with the Benetarium, but. Yeah. But to be fair, like, if, if we were doing this and it actually took time, I would have, you know, color corrected it on the, uh, actual stream. And the lens we're using is one of mine, actually. I don't know if we. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, a, it's a 20. Lens. <laughs> the lens we use for all the Benetarium stuff and, um. I think we used it for some of our music videos too. Yeah, uh, only the last, only Marshmallow World and. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I don't have a name for it. <laughs> it's a 28 millimeter Canon lens. I'm just gonna like talk about it because it's my lens and I'm camera nerdy. Um, I use I've used it a few times for um, ballet photography, but it's just not the great. Uh, not the greatest lens to use in like a dark theater and stuff because it's fixed and um, it's just I I ended up never using it for my other job. So um, I lent it to Steam Powered Draft and we use it for the podcast and stuff. So I'm glad it's getting used. Uh, yeah, let's uh, I guess we should talk about start the off uh, the reviewing what, our week. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did a, a show uh, last weekend at 
the Escondido Performing Arts Center here in California. And then this weekend, on Saturday, we just performed in Everett, Washington. Uh, so it was Brian Barberin, our newest member who... I have, I have hiccups. Apologies. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take over. Uh, and then... Uh, Second show. And it was good. Very exciting. It w- So this was me and Camille's third year in Everett. I can't believe that. It's, I can't believe it's been that long already. It was uh, Steam Power Dress fifth year there. So right. yeah, we started... Uh, 2013 was our yeah. first performance in, in April. And we had uh, uh, an event organizer who was a fan of us uh, put together the show with uh, us. And she had Abney Park open for us. And wow. that was a very weird mix i mean we <laughs> perform with Abney park at events before but we're usually separated you know on the, on the event yeah. schedule every once in a while we'll you know we'll we'll open for Abney park or something but uh that one was weird we, we were i guess the main attraction for that event and then Abney park was the opener and uh just a different crowd uh it was in a theater so if you've ever been to our Everett ones our show works well in a theater Abney park really wanted people to be standing but you know it doesn't work as well in the theater <laughs> uh, unless the theater has removable chairs but uh, and I think the fire code made it so we couldn't have anyone standing anyways. So, so all the Abney <laughs> Park fans were like, I think it was just a, awkwardly it was, sitting down. I mean, they like, did yeah. it, yeah, because that was their, you know, different kind of yeah. music and band and all that. But uh, it was fun. But uh, the second year we did, uh, I think we did two shows in 2014. That was, I think that's the start when we did start doing it in January, February. I think we did it in... Oh, you did it in January? I don't year? remember. Uh, no, I don't know. you're right. It's that pro- was, I don't remember. It was that would have been time, one yeah. of the <laughs> last shows before I came on board early yeah. February. Uh, early 2014. Yeah, Michael Reed was still doing it with us. Same with uh, Matt Smith. Uh, oh, um, was I believe. that... Oh, no, that wasn't. I was going to say, was that the first show with Female Rabbit? But that was Queen Mary, I think. Just based on Bunny's posts Yeah, Yeah, that would be 2014, I believe. January. At any rate, yeah, uh, yeah it was... It was a, uh, this was the fifth time we did it. Um, wow. The original organizer, uh, she did it two years in a row. And then uh, it, the theater became under new management. And unfortunately, uh, the organizer who put it on the first two years, um, she be she was ill the entire time. And mm. and she she told us she was, you know, not. So she wanted, Gosh. she was doing stuff at the end of her life that she wanted, felt. Wow. And she was a nice lady. Uh, and uh, she passed away. Uh Last year, I believe, in October. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did this. Sh- we kept it with a show going with a the theater um, just because it was it proved popular. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we got a kind email from her husband and their, their kids after Aww. the fact. Um, yeah. So so we made a, a small little announcement to it, a nod to it but uh, on the show stage. But I don't think anyone, you know, I mean, most people keep their lives private and stuff, so. You know, we didn't we didn't say any names and stuff. Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a really popular show. Um, oh well, with, well, one thing it's you know usually when we say oh you're performing in Washington like well why aren't you playing Seattle I'm like well you know we it's because we're doing we we have a a nice little theater picked out and you know, it's, yeah it's, it's an established <laughs> relationship. It's a little bit out of the way I suppose for some folks, but uh you know we don't we don't pick a main city and like that's where we're gonna get the most people. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I think the luckiest thing about that that we have is. A lot of our fans will travel to see us, and you know, even if that's in a in a city that's not close to the the big destinations. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I don't know. I think that's that's good for us because I mean, the the, the ticket sales did really well. Um, oh yeah. I think everything but the nosebleed seats were gone, <laughs> and uh, maybe maybe if we were in a bigger city, we would have drawn some more attention. But uh, as far as it goes, you know, we. It's that balance of yeah. like, well, there's a an existing relationship with that theater, and yeah, I mean, um, we yeah. w- when we perform in San Diego, like if we do a theater like Spreckles, like yeah, like lots of more people show up. Uh, we do one in Escondido. It's it's not like a, it's not yeah. as big, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely um y- you see the the influx of um that fraction of ticket sales that is just walk ups. Yeah. Like when we performed. In January 2016 at Spreckles, that's like heart of San Diego downtown, right on Broadway. Um, we had a ton of walk-up uh, ticket sales of people who didn't know who we were because there those people yeah. exist out there. People who have like that disposable income who like live downtown. Usually, usually older people who are like into sure. the arts and supporting the arts. Who they would just you know saw the big marquee. They're like, oh, I was walking down Broadway and I thought I'd check out your show. I mean, we talked to a lot of a lot of people in the lobby who you know said that, and that's like that's really cool. That's a really cool 
um, thing to to see because we don't always perform on Broadways and you know major cities. But I, so that's probably the benefit of performing at a theater that's well known or that's sure. you know in a in a location like downtown San Diego compared to Escondido. But it's um, not I like think, a huge no, difference. No, I mean sales. you know we we it's always great to say up oh, so, shows sold out and I was like <laughs> well no there's still like shit seats yeah <laughs> if you want there is always going to be shitty um, seats but no i mean our, our ticket sales do well enough for us that we were able to do it in every every year and they want us back every year um mm -hmm. and that's great uh yeah we're we're supposed to, we're penciled in for next year for everett washington so all of you who came out to that show uh and enjoyed that theater uh it's we're gonna do it again and uh yeah i think we got the autograph line that show yeah. was notorious <laughs> last year or the year before for having the most unorganized, like really difficult. It's it's a really <laughs> small theater, yeah. and they have you know they have an upstairs lobby. Um, and uh, two years ago we did autographs upstairs, and last year for whatever reason, just um you know talking with the the staff, the theater staff, and everything, um, we we held our autographs downstairs, um, like right outside the doors to the theater. So it was just this mass crowd of like no one could leave if they wanted to. The, yeah. Um, you know, the lines kind of like clogged all the doorways. But this um, year, yeah, we said, hey, let's go do upstairs <laughs> We're like, again. let's do upstairs again because you got that nice little like staircase up and then they can file out the yeah, other and side. It worked. And, and if you have never been to a Steam Powered Giraffe <laughs> concert before, this is usually how it goes. Uh, and we had, a, and not everyone stays for autographs at, at, for shows. Uh, usually in San Diego, we don't see as long an autograph line. Yeah. Um, and sometimes in San Diego, we can't even do autographs because, you know, <laughs> the some theaters don't even want to deal with that. No, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, the Everett is kind enough to let us stay for all hours. Um, our show runs about an hour and a half. I think it went an hour and 45 mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday night. And then we stay around for three hours and do autographs. So <laughs> I always joke with, you know, new people coming to the band, this being Brian Barber, since he's the newest, <laughs> is saying... Uh, the 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 show on stage is is just a warm up for the actual show, which is after the show when you're sitting around for three yeah. hours signing autographs, high fives and hugs and it's, all that. They're notoriously longer than the actual show, but I mean that's I'm saying notorious for the people who have to wait in the line. I yeah, mean, that's that's why they last so long. We want to get to everyone. I mean, it's the least we could do. I mean, it's not always possible for every event that we do because you know they they have their own schedules and sure. stuff. But uh, for this for some this theater and Everett um. They they say oh it's part of the show and every year we're like thanks for thanks for letting us do it and we're like oh it's part of the it's part of the experience and yeah yeah I mean it's there's some events where that's possible um, we went past yeah. midnight this year I think oh, we yeah. finally got to the last person in line at like twelve thirty and the yeah the theaters stayed open at, that's the benefit of them like actually you know seeing the fans and seeing it all they're they're like they're not trying to kick us out like yeah. super quick they're totally supportive and that's great it's a really yeah. really great venue. Uh, so thanks for everyone who showed up there. Um, we hope our, our brief interactions with all of you, even though it took us three <laughs> hours to get through everyone, uh, was great. Uh, I know it's, we, we, you always feel bad when you're a performer and, you know, you want to interact with fans, but then you realize how many there are and, you know, even spending only a few seconds with each of them, you know, autographing, saying hi. Yeah. There's, o there's only so much you can connect on and mm -hmm. not everyone's going to get the same quality just because, yeah. you know, everyone's You always, like, halfway social. through the line, I have that fear of seeming very um, ungenuine yeah. to people. I'm not trying to be, but it's just because I've been repeating the same few phrases every time I see someone um, just because they're all, you know... T saying similar things to me like oh my gosh you know loved the show it was so great I liked you in this or that and after a while you kind of like write a little script in your head of like what to say and how to thank yeah. them and it's not like I'm not being genuine but I'm saying the same thing so often that it I start to have that fear that like oh my god are they gonna think I'm like faking it or I don't know you know you, yeah, you yeah. always have worries that like people aren't going to you know get what they want out well, of the some people are some people are more socially uh, awkward or some people are more socially adept so you know you get a wide range of people so you know we always uh yeah we always interact with people who are willing want yeah. to talk to us and then of course we try to make everyone else feel comfortable so they can at least yeah. shake your hand and say hi and I, I i also have the added fear camille probably does too of um trying to talk to people at the same time i'm ringing them up and helping them with their mm. merchandise order because it happens a lot where it's like i'll be running someone's card 
um, while they're thanking me for, you know, the show or whatever. And I'll be like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. Like, I'm so glad you came. Oh, and I need your signature right here. Cool. Or, you know, it's like, oh, you're oh, thank you so much for coming. Oh, your card is declined uh, here. Just, <laughs> yeah. you know, like no, yeah. that doesn't happen often. And we have trouble with our chip readers sometimes. I'm just saying that, like, um, like, I'm always so worried that I'm going to be seen as like, a mean person or something because I'm like trying to have a conversation with them, but at the same time help them with their merchandise and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah. I have that a added anxiety on top of me. So, uh, but yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, but yeah, great show. Um, we're, we, all oh, the, we, the show in Escondido are all our micro foggers, which are these, uh, machines that strapped to our backs and they're basically miniature fog machines. Um, they, they didn't work. Only one of them did for uh, the Saturday show in Escondido last weekend. But oh, uh, yeah. then I took a look at them, and they, and they all worked. And then I realized that uh, there were air bubbles trapped inside the uh, mm -hmm. the fog juice syringes, these little capsule things you plug into the... Uh, but anyways, I I made cleaned them all up, made sure they worked. And, everything, and we were joking during sound check that, oh, they all work now, just like they did during the sound check last show. But then during the show, <laughs> they'll, stop, they'll all stop working. And then... Uh, but no, they, they worked wonderfully, and Steve just had a blast uh, doing those. Actually, oh. I think one of these was a question. Yeah, that, hey, that why, was a well, question. Hey, let's get on to questions right now. <laughs> let's get a question. So I was actually going to ask that one because it's a good question. Um, someone wanted to know who activates the mini fogs, the robots, or Steve via remote control. Uh, so yeah, Steve Negretti, our sound engineer, he's he's playing multiple roles. I mean, he's he's also a character, quote unquote, in the show. He's He plays himself as a sound engineer, <laughs> but he has his own bits. He, he you know, he he's... He writes some of the stuff for the show too. Writes, we don't write anything down. It's all <laughs> like you know, but he's a lot of the some of the jokes are his. You know, we all, it's definitely a, a creative environment where we let everyone kind of have their input with it, and uh, uh, yeah. So, but he also has uh, the wireless uh, control for the microfoggers, and he can fire them all individually or together. And there's a little bit of timing because uh, they don't all warm up the same just based on their age, and you know, we don't we don't try to keep them fully main. We don't maintain them all at the same time because they all kind of break and stuff at different times and <laughs> so therefore like like rabbits right now takes a little longer to warm up and it doesn't expel as much as everyone else's because they have new newer vaporizers hooked onto them and we have replacement ones but we kind of since they're expensive you kind of <laughs> use them until they die and then you're like okay let's replace the vaporizer in this one and, <laughs> and i say we I, I do it i do all that <laughs> stuff uh but yeah so steve has control over it and he can fire them all at the same time it's, it's super super like easy radio technology and sometimes it don't work uh, we have plenty of shows where we're not allowed to use microfoggers just due to sensitive fire alarm equipment. Um, but if a show has haze and stuff, usually it's okay to use them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but sometimes they just, you know, like <laughs> most expensive equipment, when you have this niche thing that isn't like, it's they're not put through the their workhorse environment kind of deal. It, yeah. They just break and they're expensive to fix. And you service them yourself. Like you buy all the parts, but... Even like, you know, the pumps in them are still like uh, ridiculously expensive, <laughs> uh, like 300 bucks. And yeah, so it, and they're, this is all Mike. But it's one of those things like, well, they manufacture the parts themselves. And anyways, uh, but a lot of that, the microfoggers look really cool at Everett. Uh, they did. It helps when you have like uh, Everett or lighting is never very good there. Um, it's just because... Yeah, have a volunteer lighting guy. They do their best. Sometimes you end up with a good one, but uh, uh, the I'll, foggers always make for great. I'll photos. say that. Yeah, I mean, if you, uh, Steve has cues for the show and stuff, a very generic stuff. So you know, it's not like the uh, uh, lighting person has to kind of know everything. But it's just not good lighting <laughs> that show. <laughs> like we would be in the dark for some of our bits, like stuff that kind of stuff. And you're like, yeah. and then whatever. But uh, the, the the fog definitely helped because there wasn't like much. Uh, lighting change anyways Hayes is a theater photographer's best friend yeah. all my best pictures of the ballet or of steam powered giraffe are the ones with like fog or smoke in the back you know reflecting off the colorful lights and like that just immediately yeah. ups your picture to like professional status <laughs> i'd agree well let's uh, let's do some more questions okay let's see i got a few here um most people are uh, recommending songs for later, but uh, here's one. Have you thought about doing an acoustic type or smaller show for smaller conventions that you want to play? 
but um, uh, no, the, uh, just picked that because it's interesting to explain why we. Yeah, the, the main reason for that is uh, we get at, we've gotten asked that in the in the past before, Plenty. and and usually our, we turn turn people down enough that we that we we start to see less and less of that. Yeah. Um. The the main issue with that is um no one is going to pay for the main show. They're never going to have us perform our regular show if we ever do acoustic stuff. Yeah, they'll uh, just want to. Pay less for y- it's, half it, of the band. It's a way basically. cheaper to fly three people out with like one acoustic guitar, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's and that's kind of. And, if, and you don't, and if I don't you, you can't blame them. It's like, well, if, if this is your act, right? Then, but we don't want but that to become our act. Hypothetically, <laughs> if you if you like did one of those or something and people saw it, they're not seeing they're that that acoustic that's, set mm, wouldn't reflect what the act is. No, you don't want people to see that. I mean, when we did really. Balboa Bal- Bal- Park, we didn't have a concert show when when we took to a stage for the rare events back then it was kind of weird because we were like oh now we're stuck to microphones yeah and we had to try to play and um that's why we created the stage show because yeah. it's like well this is how we can rep- represent the act of what we want uh, what we imagine it to be right and even doing it acoustically we can do a little bit of it but eventually it turns into like oh well now you can do that acoustic act that you're you're going to do acoustically here because we, we've done a little few things like out of makeup we'll do like a little mm-hmm. oh uh, uh, vips will get on a boat and we'll go eat cheese and we'll play them acoustic songs <laughs> and stuff like that. But eventually that'll turn into like, well, what if we, what if we, d- you do that, but you put makeup on and bring your acoustic instruments and then play here. And we're but like, uh, yeah. and then it turns and into, fly half the and then it turns out. into like, Oh, well then this, you're not going to be able to project in this big space. So how about we just hook my, why don't we just put microphones in front of you and then and, and plug your guitar in. And then eventually it turns into a very crappy version of our act. And, yeah. And, and, and it's, you can't really yeah. <laughs> go, ha- you can't really go halfway. It's like and, I mean, all the, the way or nothing. And the main reason we don't do it is because we've, you know, we've, we've met those challenges before. And eventually it's like, you know, it's, it's not that we're reliant on our show. Like we can do an acoustic show if we want to, and, and we'll yeah. pick the songs that sound good acoustically and, and make it if we ever had to. But the thing is, is we're marking ourselves as bigger than that. And our fan turnout is big enough that, it, you can make the money to, yeah. to afford the stuff. It's just, and if you don't have to bring, if you don't have to rent any, you know, uh, PA equipment and stuff, like, eventually, it's like... Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be cheaper. And of course, and if you could still get the same amount of people showing up to an acoustic set... And well, one thing, you can't get that many people. Yeah. So it logistically it doesn't make any I sense. I don't <laughs> think you or Bunny or anyone in the band would actually even want to do that at this point no, because no, no, the no. act is a theater art. Yeah, show. it's a it's theater a theatri- show. Theatrical show. And that's not to say we've done we've done the, we've done the act in a theater before, a uh, completely acoustic without right. any any instruments, but, uh, smaller theaters. But that was back when we were still doing Bubble Apart. Yeah, I mean, and you guys are interacting with characters on projection screens now, and it's yeah. like you you couldn't really do the act justice as it is right now in 2017 it, it, without all the the stuff. But I mean, that, so that's the thing. Like, yeah, smaller conventions, and you know, yeah, we and we've done smaller conventions pro bono before. Like, oh yeah, we'll come show you how many people we bring, and then we bring those people, and it's like, yeah, that helps their convention out a lot. But it's then it's like, that's, okay, well next year, how about we do it actually? It's for real? really <laughs> funny. I think um, this past year, like over the summer or something, I remember I was like. I was like squashing rumors that I, I saw going around that people were like, oh, I heard that Steam Power Draft is going to be busking at a Canadian convention just like just there for, you know, like really, you know, just the three of them or something like that. I don't remember. But like I kept seeing it everywhere. And I was like, I don't know where they got this idea, but we couldn't even do that if we wanted to. Like, well, I mean, we'd have to be sponsored anyways. Yeah, I yeah that's what I mean. We'd have to be part, like, of, part of an event. <laughs> Like, get into the I country. But if, you, <laughs> if you ever hear that, like, Steam Power Giraffe is just going to be walking around busking at a convention in the future, it's not true. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it's not that... Unless we say it is. I mean, like, it's... Unless we announce it. I mean, that's just the thing of it. We're small enough that no one... If... That no one's going to really respect the act unless you get the act. You know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. an event organizer. Most of them are doing it for the love of the arts and stuff, you know? But when it comes down to money, it's like, okay, we can have this band come in with all their fans, but then we're going to have to, you know, fly them out here, which is a cost. Put them up in a hotel, that's a cost. Um, we're going to have to transport them and their equipment from the airport and stuff, that's a cost. Uh, and then we're going to have to rent some, we're going to have to rent a stage. We're going to have to rent some lighting. We're going to mm-hmm. have to rent a sound system. I mean, that's natural for any kind of concert and stuff. But, uh, and then uh, for us, you know, we have a few uh, things that we don't, that other bands don't ask for. Like we have a specific uh uh, soundboard for Steve to use, which uh, a specific series, you know, it's, it's common in musical theater place. Uh, and mo and most concerts would never use something like that. Sometimes they would, it, it really depends on how big the event is though. And, uh, and there's, uh, there's other, some other equipment that, you know, instead of like giant XLR cords, we use like ethernet cable for, cause we have a digital stuff for our soundboard. So 
And uh, the costs are pretty much the same as like a regular band. It's just that some of the some of the the technical stuff isn't like you're going to have laying around because you're already put hosting a bunch of other bands. So we become unique in that sense where it's like we need to have this one thing for this band, but no other bands are going to be able to are actually going to be making use of it. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing is you know we have to be in an area where it's going to make sense. People can make money off of off of the act. Um, and you know the main thing I see with I don't no no it's not even something we should probably get into, but like the main thing I see is that you know if you're gonna have if we're gonna be the main thing for an event like. After a certain point, it's like, why are you doing the event? You should do the concert because eventually you're like, you're trying to take the profit from the concert and make all these other things happen. Yeah. And like, that's tough to do because the majority of people there for some events, not all of them, obviously let's uh, we're like something like Akon, you know, we're a very, even though we, no one could get into the concert and it was packed and stuff mm-hmm. like we're, it's still <laughs> small compared to their stadium concert that they have. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, like we're a fl- we're a fly in the mass in the in the whole convention. So, Yomacon's a little similar. Yomacon, uh, like we're we're one of the big uh, bigger uh, music stuffs there. Yeah. But the, I mean the convention is huge, like thirty thousand people. So, you know, there's not thirty thousand people coming to that that area. Like you can fit about eight hundred, I think, in that convention hall. Uh, what do you think um, your biggest audience has been? Was it the UK? I think yeah, the UK. Just because, well, one, for one thing, because they told us the numbers, but mm-hmm. also just because. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never seen that many people <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a place before. I think it was over 900. Yeah, it was that it looked like 900 people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I've seen I know what 400 people looks like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, it's like a standard theater show for the most part. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's and once again, to weave in the whole live stream thing we've got planned. That's another great, exciting reason to do yeah. it. Yeah. Is well, to make the audience bigger than you know one of sure. our shows could be well i mean hopefully that many people hopefully will turn up. but we'll be happy if there's only 50 people well oh, I, d- yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to, with 50 people donating five bucks <laughs> each we're crossing our fingers it, it probably wouldn't be it's, it, it's it wouldn't be a profitable way to do the show <laughs> but as a supplement that's a one way that's like the least i'm hoping for but uh hopefully we'll be there's also the hope there's that there could be a lot of people and it'll actually get us some attention um, and you know, for multiple reasons. So people who can never see our show, whether they're in a place where we're just never going to have the f- funds or the support to be able to go out there and put on a show, yeah. uh, that they can actually see the next best thing, which would be a free concert on YouTube. That's done as best we can do it. There's a, f- I mean, the f- I, you know, I, I can imagine it growing, you know, like there's technical details of like, you know, it's going to be a mono, uh, show because that's how we <coughs> when you perform when you do live you're all nothing's done in stereo it's in mono because you want mm-hmm. the whole room to hear um and uh i don't think well, we're starting out we're not going to mix the show stereo because steve is <laughs> used to live sound yeah. and mixing in <coughs> mono uh which is just how live sound goes um so there's like a few things like that'll be different like if especially if you're using headphones it i mean it sounds fine it's just you know it's a different experience than being there in person because you're not hearing the reverberations off the room and other stuff like that. Uh, but it's a test, you know, next best thing is the best way to kind of put it is. Yeah. Like, you don't, s- there's people who do live stream concerts, but I there's no one that puts on a show kind of like Steam Power Draft and does that at the same time. So I think that's where our, maybe we'll get a little bit of attention, hopefully. You're pioneering something, kind of. I don't know. I mean, people do live stream concerts, yeah. but. No, but. Since, since we're kind of theatrical, it, uh, it, it it's makes It's a little different than yeah. anything I've seen before. Hopefully, it'll hold the attention of, of just random people looking on YouTube. Uh, also, it will help, you know, since these would be archived, people be able to see, like, oh, I want that show here. And, you know, when uh, naturally, we always get we always get events and stuff paring it down, like, oh, you don't need the projections. You don't need this. And eventually, it's like, well, if you can't rent the you know, 200 bucks for the screen and the projector or something from your local AV <laughs> rental <laughs> company. Then it's like, well, you know, 200, you, cause you can do the math. You're like, well, how many t- people do you have to sick? you have to sell four or five <laughs> yeah, $20 <laughs> or something like your event. You can, you can make the money there somehow, but um, eventually it's just like, well, we, then we have to start rehearsing the act a little differently. Like, okay. So if we're not talking to these things and I mean, if you've seen the show, it's, it's obviously it's done on a, it's, it's done so it can be, you know, um, if we, it's hard to screw up on stage because it's so yeah. self-aware, I guess. <laughs> um, but we it's still, it's, there's still a little bit of polish to like get from one song to the next, and we have the bits in between, and that's kind of missing from our music videos and stuff like that. And yeah, you can see it on on some of the older uh, like uh, films that we have on our YouTube. They're free now. You can still buy them on like Amazon and stuff, but we have them available to watch for free. Uh, the YouTube uh, Golden Harp of Eternal Dreams. That was basically a private YouTube concert, but, you know, edited with to be hmm. like a sh- 
show and then we actually had a live show the walter robotics expo from 2013 and that's kind of like the closest thing to a show that you're going to get and but it, they're outdated a little bit you know we the act as we have it now because it keeps changing and we have new bits uh we don't really have a, any video of uh, i'm edit i'm editing something we filmed uh the last year after the summer after a slew of shows we were all sick that day but we already rented a screen <laughs> for that so shoot. it's already so like, outdated well, and everyone's sick and, yeah everyone's sick. <laughs> but uh we'll definitely finish it just because it's like yeah it has hatch time capsule rabbit and spine um but yeah live streams that's the that's the wave of the future for us that's not to say we're not do we're, uh, we are doing other shows for sure um but uh we want to add this to our yeah our yearly schedule uh I don't, I mean, we're hoping once a month i'm hoping for bi-monthly i think that would be the right amount you know no. we couldn't do it weekly that'd be impossible bi-monthly always time. confuses me because that means twice a month or every other month it's or both every other week. i think okay <laughs> pretty much yeah uh because that means every month we'll probably most likely have two shows but you know based on schedules and and if we're flying out to an actual sh live concert we wouldn't have uh you know the my brain's turning off it's okay I'm, it's been a long week yeah <laughs> uh oh we wouldn't have the time to do the live stream so we're going to treat it like a show where we're going to schedule them in advance and people will know when to turn in and mm -hmm. if you can't make it to the actual live uh broadcast of it um we'll have the archive version of it and it's not like we're going to go in and edit the videos you know it's going to be live unless something terrible happens like a big black emptiness of like the videos cut out <laughs> maybe we'll cut that out of the, out of it but <laughs> For the most part, it's just going to be like a live show. So, you know, any screw ups and stuff like that will be in there. And um, and also it, it, it without editing, that means it doesn't require us to go back and, you know, polish things up, you know, like, oh, now we can now we can make everything stereo. We, that's, that's what we do with for uh, like something like the YouTube concert that I'm working. I say YouTube concert. Now there's different things. But the one that we filmed with Hatchworth last year, like I am doing that. I am going through and making it sound as much like an album as possible by splitting the stereo so tracks, you, cutting out any of the dead air from You might the do what you did for like Walter Robotics and make like a separate like audio like album for it maybe or for no? what? For the, for the the live concert from last the the concert video we yeah, filmed last um, year with Hatchworth. I, I think so just because we we're already taking it sounds really we're good. already taking the time to you can to do it for the make video. Another live album. It, yeah, and I think it would just be digital only cuz the no one buys the live CDs. Um, <laughs> but just because just in case people wanted that audio. Um yeah. Uh, so, so, so hopefully that'll be nice for people. And, uh, the other thing that the live, the live stream con YouTube concert, I'll just refer to it as the Hatchworth, uh, rabbit and spine YouTube concert is different than the, <laughs> the bra uh, the zero spine and rabbit YouTube concert live stream. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> Two different things. So one's pre things. one's recorded already that we did last year. Yeah. And we're editing, and we have all this tr track separated, so we're able to edit it like, kind of like we did our previous films. And uh, the ones we're going to be doing bi monthly. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna ingrain that now, so then people start expecting it, and then oh. then everyone's kind of like wants to do it more than once a month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bi monthly means both. Isn't that confusing? I'd heard that before though. So is bi monthly. Not the right? Not yeah, right you can use no. You can <laughs> use either one. Bi monthly means occurring or um, occurring twice a month or every two months. So either works. Isn't that weird? I've heard that before. Well, anyway, two times a month is when we plan to do it. Bi monthly. Well, we're gonna start with one a month, and we're gonna do that first one. And that first one is gonna be like, we'll be prepared technically, but you know, we have to feel it out. Like it's gonna be different than a show. We don't have an audience. There's no. There's no like. Yeah. There's dead air after a joke or a bit or something funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a little different and we don't, and we're talking to cameras instead of, but we've done it before and we think it's, we think it's going to translate pretty well. <laughs> we, it might be, take a while to get used to, but, uh, cause you know, we're still doing live shows, live concerts, but, uh, uh, it also means we'll be able to rotate songs a lot more because when we do the live show, we, we want people to experience the same show in every new location that we do. Um, and of course we change up the set during the year a little bit anyways, but with the live YouTube stuff, the idea is going to be that, oh, of course we could have the same show every time, but we're gonna, we're only gonna make, we're gonna make it like an hour instead of an hour and a half like live shows usually are. So therefore, there's like a reason to go see a live show. But also, you'll get the the best kind of show possible where we're not tired by the end of it. Whereas a live show, you know, we we put all our force in a weekend, and then we're ugh, we're kind of dead after the weekend. Yeah. Whereas for uh, we can kind of leave people wanting more for a, a YouTube concert that's live streamed. 
uh, if we only do it for an hour. So it feels like, oh, that wasn't enough, but it was, still was an hour. Yeah. And then that way, you know, it's like our energy, because we, we've we performed long enough that we know that an hour and a half is literally the longest we could go. Um, and then the show, the, the energy level that you have to sustain for the whole show just lowers if you have to do it longer. Whereas you can do bur- uh, bursts of energy if you shorten it to an hour. So, um, so that's, that's, that's kind of the goal. <laughs> so that first one, we're going to have a date soon. Uh, I'm building a PC today. Uh, I'm waiting for one more part today. And then uh, I'll be doing some testing and stuff. Nothing to show for engineer tiers or anything, if you're an engineer tier wondering like that. Um, we, I mean, we might have a sh- something for the engineer tiers, but I think we're, we're doing it in a private setting, our tests and stuff, and then we're just going to go live with the YouTube stuff. Uh, since we already do the Benetarium Weekly, there's only so much we can get done in a week. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, I think that's all I wanted to say. Oh no no, I, the one point that the live YouTube concerts will help with maybe uh, a benefit could be maybe a side effect <laughs> is that other events promoters uh, maybe uh, convention heads or even theater people who want to actually put on shows with us will see the live thing say oh I want that did I say that already? It's, well, it, I'm it's, probably repeating myself. it's just <laughs> um, it'll be great for um, further exposure. Cause we we do a yeah. lot of we do a lot of conventions and stuff throughout the year, but most of them are ones who w- we've already done before. Yeah. Um, you know, there's on, only so many new events that are going to reach out to us, or and they have to there's be, only they have so to be many. Big too, the, there to are only to... so many uh, new ones that are that will know about us and be able to get us out there. Yeah, because um, we get we get stuff for like conventions that are going to have a few hundred people. And they have a space that can hold like a few hundred people yeah. for a concert. And we're like, okay, I mean, well, I, we could. Like, yeah, and we're excited. <laughs> no way to make your money back on any, something like that. Any of those <laughs> small events, we're always, you know, intrigued and um, excited if it's somewhere new that we haven't been to. But the reality is that most conventions and events out there are just too small to get our entire theatrical act out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be really good for exposure because it, it's just more like word of mouth. Um, word of mouth, quote unquote. It's all... Yeah, I mean on the internet now, but um, yeah, it's just a way of um I think doing we'll, the act more often. We'll get a new audience too. I think we'll find an audience that's Getting like literally people. they just like the YouTube shows. Because when we did Balboa Park, there was a time when we did Balboa Park and we were doing theater shows yeah, at like the same time. Yeah, like a little time. bit of an overlap. And there were people who would do would only come to the Balboa Park shows, probably because they were free and they didn't want to pay for a theater yeah. show. But there were people who only liked that version of the show, and then there were people who only liked the theater versions and they wouldn't go to Balboa Park. So. Uh, and then, of course, the people only like the zoo stuff. And th- then when we stopped doing the zoo, they didn't like the act that we had. Because, <laughs> you know, we conformed to the zoo. We did a lot less talking, and it was more just us playing music. Uh, and, you know, none of us in the band really liked that. And, well, okay, the musicians like that. But uh, <laughs> but we we like we like stopping the show and, and having funny inter- robot interactions on yeah. stage. Like, that's that's the act to us, because that's what we did in Belleville Park. And, um, but whatever, I mean... So it'll be. A, I think we'll we'll draw in a, a new new fans. You know that that. I mean, I I like the idea that people are going to be able to tune in almost like we're a series of some sort. I mean, that's. I don't know how much it'll be. A. Uh, it'll be. It, I mean, it's not going to be like a Netflix season or something, but it's it's going to be just live concerts weekly that are archived. But it'd be. I just I can imagine people tuning in kind of like they do the Benetarium. Yeah. So this is a little more like uh we're not really performing here we're just kind of talking but a show oh it'd be so good it's like it only makes sense it's and the technology is there now and Mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about this like every benetarium now (laughs) because we have been the last few times so that's all right apologies if any of you are sick and tired of hearing it but if you're a fan of steam pirate draft you're probably a fan of of the benetarium i don't know is anyone listening to the benetarium and doesn't know about steam pirate draft because I would be really interested <laughs> to know. Um, I only like the Benetarium. I don't like your robot band. Like, I don't. Th- I think that's our thing. Like this is just a supplement to Sting Power Draft. I'm always <laughs> really um, interested in hearing how people learn about the band because I've heard plenty about, um, uh, you know. Oh, I discovered you through the Steam World Heist game, or I think one even said they discovered the band through Battleborn. You know, they heard the Montana th- song, that kind of thing. I'm gonna thing. get water. You can keep okay. talking. Okay, um, so I I love hearing about like the more obscure gateways because you know most people say Honey Bee or Diamonds, but there've been a lot of like um like more unusual uh gateway stories of how they heard of us. But I haven't heard of anyone yet who you know found out about the band through the Benetarium. That one, that's like that would be a really obscure way to discover us because you would have to be like looking for podcasts, um, I don't know of just you know whatever random things or happen across it on a YouTube recommendation. 
Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, another question. Uh, how many pounds of makeup do you guys think you use in a year? Um, not a lot if you're talking weight wise, because I only, I think I only go through like two containers of the little white cream makeup a year because that stuff goes really far. You don't need a lot on your applicator. Um, so like, and, and, and I don't know, those are like two ounces each. So, I mean, I'd say I go through like four to six ounces of white makeup a year. Um, but that's just the, the cream makeup. Um, uh, a container of powder, like a four ounce container of setting powder will usually last me a year. It's less than you think. I don't know. The robots might go through more, but I don't go through that much makeup weight wise. It lasts pretty long. Um, yeah, no, it lasts uh, quite a while. Because, I mean, we, ne we usually don't have shows like every week or something. Yeah. I adjusted the white balance a little bit because it still looked a little blue to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little better. I think the lighting's just garbage. I don't, I'm OCD about this. Um, uh, so OCD about it, I didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one that we've... Uh, let me see. Oh, we've answered this one a lot. Do you have a favorite place to play? Not really. I don't know. I like all wherever the there are fans. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, here's a quick one for you. It's about lore. Um, in the lore of Steam Power Giraffe, I'm guessing, are Rex Marksley and Albert Alexander real people, or are they just folk tales within the Steam Power Giraffe, well, that's a giraffe good universe? Um, so in our universe, and this is kind of that information that we don't, we don't. We never do our shows and have people like they need to know yeah. everything. I mean, the show already feels that way anyways because it just it's not it's not just watching a band, you know. It's not like a theater show a, telling a story from start to finish. It's it's the idea that there's robots that are pretending to be a band. Like we're pretending to be robots, pretending to be a band. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Cuz it's Cause like it's the robots like we just went we show it's the exact same thing in real life except you have to we're trying to suspend this belief that that we're not humans that are showing up to play this concert. We're robots that are just showing up to play a concert. Yeah. It's not like, how welcome. We're all on the moon right now. It's not like that. It's no, that it's we're still in a theater. We're robots. So but once you enter that theater and you're <laughs> playing the robot characters, it's like, you know, an in canon performance. It's like you're yeah. pretending to, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. But like, I mean, I guess, I guess the fans who know the lore and the backstory would understand because like, don't you even mention San Diego in the comic? Like, that's yeah. that's the, the the backstory. So the to answer the question, uh, yeah, the, the lore is that uh, in, that the, there's blue matter portals that uh, that uh, Peter Walter the first kind of all that stuff kind of started out, and it created a new dimension called Kazoo Land. And from Kazoo Land, you're able to travel to other dimensions, as we're just gonna c call it now, just so we can retroactively change it if we need to. But uh, <laughs> The idea being that where Rex Marksley and Captain Albert Alexander exist, it doesn't necessarily have to be in our timeline right here on planet Earth. It could be on planet Earth in some other, you know, in, in a universe right. where there are mermaids and stuff. Yeah. Or there is, uh, or, uh, you know, Rex Marksley where, you know, demons and and, yeah. and stuff like that happened. Um, although with, uh, I, I, liked it, I like in my head, not, we've never said it, but I like to think that uh, Rex Marksley is in the same universe as... Uh, as steam powered giraffe yeah just just because i like the, that there's the idea that there can be a connection between peter walter and rex and right but the idea is being that if they ever go to kazoo land you know you can pull these people from different times and places yeah. because you know so magic or yeah I, I always figured that within the universe the fictional universe he created where the robots exist here on earth rex marksley and all those um heroes from the songs do exist as real people yeah, I don't. I mean, some of them don't make as much sense because we already have a history, but we're already suspending disbelief that the robots exist in this universe. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think maybe it's not official, but, but uh, as far as I think Rex would be, exist in our world, or the, our even our world, it has yet is we're suspending mm -hmm. disbelief for some things we're making up. But uh, uh, I think I like to think like Captain is from a different universe where. He existed because, yeah. you know, uh, after a while, it's like, okay, well, we didn't have it. There's no gap. You know, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know. And then you got the whole Vice Quadrant thing. Uh, yeah. Like and that one we actually like set two universes up. What are they? Saying what prime and yeah. Omega yeah. were the two timelines. But like in the prime timeline is the one that 
Ca uh, Commander Cosmo exists and like the world was destroyed by the sky sharks and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, <laughs> so it's, it, like, it's 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 all because it's convenient to tell us tell. Yeah, story but they're all tell. like <laughs> I I imagine all these stories like take place in all these like branching timelines that you know exist in a multiverse together. Well, yeah. Well, our our main idea is that you know we live in a world that's n nor and I I don't like the idea of like let's just pretend like this stuff happens like like yeah. I like the idea that uh, yeah there is no Walter Manor it's more anywhere ambiguous. on Earth, it's but. After that, any of the more fantastical stuff, it takes place in a different dimension yeah. or a place like called Kazoo Land. And, and then you can just have all fun with connected it. You don't have to worry, worry about <laughs> rules and stuff. Yeah. Let's uh, let's play a song. Do we have any requests or something? Let's oh, we have plenty of requests. Let's see what, and you, if I want to do any of them. Do you mind if I ask one more quick question? Because no, actually, yeah. I'm curious about this, too. Um, someone asked if um, Steve archives all of the audio from previous live shows. Like no, no, none of, he doesn't. None of our live has, shows are the, archived. He has the capability to record them, but we we don't record every show. Got it. No, we do not. I was curious about that myself. I mean, it's, it's, I it, is, not, it is another step. It's not that we can't. It's yeah. that it would, it would be another step, and there's no right. reason for us to do it. We perform enough that we don't need to archive yeah. them. Um, if we wanted to, we could. It wouldn't take like it wouldn't be a sure. stretch like to do it. Um, and obviously we have before we've recorded the Walter Robotics Expo. Yeah. Um, yeah. And for us, it's like, it's w like to make every show into a concert we w into a, something that we could share with people, like polish it up. We just, we don't have the time to do that. Like, yeah, we don't have, yeah. And like, who knows the, no one knows the act as good as we do. And we, so we would have to do it. And you know what I mean? Like, I ain't going to stand over someone's shoulder and tell them how to edit a song and stuff. Like, I know when the stuff has to change, like. It's 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 complicated. Yeah. Act. If it was just one lead singer, one guitarist, one bass, you know what I mean. Sure. Like, but it's not. It's it's more theatrical, and you kind of got to know the act. And and I since yeah. I do all the <laughs> album stuff, I'm going to be the one that's going right. to be able to get closer to it. And it's not to say if someone else couldn't. It's just for how small we are, it only makes sense for me to do yeah. it. <laughs> so for song requests, if, if this is e this is easiest for me to just go in order of like yeah, old oldest to newest, and you can pass up whatever you want. <laughs> but our first request was for Oh No. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, have we done that one before? I don't know. I think maybe you did on like a Periscope, but I wasn't around. Okay, yeah, I've, I, I probably I can do it. You'll I can't say that I know how always, to play it off the top of my head, but you can always skip any for now and go back to it. But I was just gonna read them off as I like they the came challenge, in. Challenge, but let's. Let's see. That was from an hour ago. I like the challenge. I don't know how to play it, but I do have I have a cheat <laughs> sheet here when I was recording it, so I know what key it's in. Well, I'm also real tired. Let's get that out of the way. Do we do we answer that question? Did someone ask how tired we are? No. <laughs> we yeah, very it was tired. A, we ha and um, I saw at least one person in, in the engineer tier chat say that this is their first Benetarian podcast. Oh boy! Watching live, <laughs> so thank you, thank you for all your support. Thank you for tuning in. And we apologize any, that we're so. And for anyone who <laughs> it's your first time, just know that we just finished two weekends of shows and we're very tired and sleepy, and this is a very laid back well, version of the podcast. It's not. It's not so much the shows. It's that you know we got well, we got out of the the Everett show at. It's after midnight, and then when we finally got that, that's what I mean back when to I the say, hotel room. Uh, yeah, two weekends of shows. It's everything encompass, uh, encompassing that weekend, the yeah. travel and the flights. and. You get about three, well, in Everett, we got about three to four hours of sleep each, and then our flight was, I don't know, 11 a.m., but we had to leave at 7 a.m. <laughs> to get to the airport. And so, you know, uh, and you don't want to, you don't want to, like, fall asleep right when you get home. I didn't. So I stayed up and to wake up at a normal time today, too, but it takes it takes a few days to get I'm like I'm you can never really catch up on sleep. You can just kind of trying your body to play video games, <laughs> like nodding off, and I'm like, it's too early. I can't fall asleep now. I must play video games. Okay. So uh, there's no way I could do this at full speed. I'm just, I mean, I, I I'm is, pretty relaxed today. It's is, raining uh, outside here in in San Diego. It is pouring here. Um, and we just came from snow in Everett. Yeah. But it was not the snow that looked magical. It, it like no. it was the kind that melted immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like chilled out campfire version of Ono. This is from the Vice Squadron. Oh, and there's not going to be any harmonies or anything. Oh, no. Oh, no. How does, it, how does the mix sound? Is it like guitar too loud? Sounds good to me. Because I'm hearing something different because I have the IEMs. Well, let us know, Engineer Tears. How's it sound? Decent? <laughs> Darkness. Of space exploded when 
<laughs> Gotta turn my chair a little bit. The snow must must go on. The Request. S- <laughs> the darkness of space exploded when a beam of light emerged and awoke in all the crew aboard the SS Delarue. Oh, the spacecraft Delarue. <laughs> <laughs> man appeared outside the ship and he was pale as snow as the earth was blue I like this. it couldn't be him hadn't he died long ago dressed in a tattered space suit his helmet smashed his eyes glowing sober I had to scroll the the lyrics and because I also have the chords here <laughs> with the gleam of the grip of his hand he saw through the wall all dooming the ship and every woman and man oh no Destruction they wrong. I'm gonna fall asleep with this. Beams of it. energy shot from his hands and lasers flew from her air as she whipped her head around. Moon base Delta Six. Oh, you didn't stand a chance. It ripped through Moon Base Gamma One. Then blew up Alpha 7 and Omega 3 through 8. <laughs> Hundreds of poor souls were trapped inside. They didn't see it coming. Now could anyone hope to survive? Oh no. This is a little easier to dig deeper. <laughs> Oh, did you want me to do the scrolly thing? Uh, but yeah, but the laptop's but, over here. Okay. Do we stop? So- this is a bunch of talking now. Here, how can we do this? <laughs> see if Put I can in move the middle. It. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Because if the if that power p- pulls out, then the here, whole stream here, stops. Here, here, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, we're tired. I didn't. Sorry for this ruining out. the flow of the song, everyone. I also won't be able to read it from that far away because of the bright light. So. This is we didn't think this through. I always I if you can read that, I can scroll for you. Let me just get this. I'm I'm sure Engineer Tears are enjoying watching a struggle on the video, but the audio and Benetarian podcast people are like Get it together guys or I'm gonna stop listening. I'll be right back. And then I lost my pick. <laughs> Shouldn't have woken up today. And now the cables are in the way. Here, I'll put the microphone here. Move my phone. There we go. Oh, my headset fell on the ground. Uh, everything sucks. Okay, I think it's close enough. I'll extend this. And now I can scroll for you, so you don't have to stop playing? <laughs> yeah, if you want. If you want to do that, that would help. But the, all this is just talking i didn't think this one through okay i've never played the song acoustically and if i have it was probably on just like a a periscope stream or something i really (laughs) i don't know how to do all this (laughs) earth space militia 10 this is commander kazmu she is she's the source of his power i'm gonna separate him (laughs) 
few thousand light years away should do the trick. <laughs> Roger that, Commander Cosmo. Uh, the bounce screws are armed and ready. Almost there. I've got her. Fire on him now. Boom, 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 boom. What are you? Cosmo, go. No. Ah, no. I don't know what music goes here. Cause it's been, I don't know. No. Don't leave me. <laughs> what, what, what have I done? Oh, it's it's much more dramatic on and corny on the thing. This is this is amazing. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. I didn't want to see what I've become. Oh, 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 oh. Even when the moon shatters the time. <laughs> Scroll. I just need to see that. Oh, okay. So, sorry. We'll teach. We'll learn how to do the scrolling, and then, <laughs> then we'll, and then I'll be able. Maybe is, whatever. You knew what you were getting into. We said this was gonna be a, a crappy podcast, right? And you picked "Oh No," which is like the most theatrical song on the album. <laughs> it yeah. Like has dialogue. It's like exposition. <laughs> no okay. <laughs> you will follow me through the pain. I can always count on you through every <laughs> thing. And you keep me moving on like a soul eaten. <laughs> soul eaten. Because he's dying. <laughs> soul eaten. You keep me moving like a soliton, a soliton, a soliton. Commander Cosmo, he, he killed her. No, I feel it. Oh, she's letting me die. I lost it. I lost all my humanity, immortality. Uh, my death has long been overdue. That's the end of that song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how it ends. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, well, that one doesn't translate well acoustically, but as but it was it was funny. It's okay. Funny in, a, funny in a I can't do it sense. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, um, uh, Kendall B. Hunter uh, tweeted us twice, mm. suggesting either um, if you're feeling daring, do an acoustic overdrive, and he also suggested one-way ticket. Ah. So maybe you just like pick one of those. Uh, well, I can do overdrive for sure. I actually did overdrive um, on a on a random uh, Instagram live stream because I just tested it out, and I did like a depressing version of overdrive. And I'll probably do that because I'm I'm tired enough to do that. Um, depressing versions of all our ah. There goes the thing again. Let me go get it. Yeah, the power cord for this camera is not as long as the other one, so naturally. Everything sucks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Instagram live streams I do, they're not like archived because Instagram doesn't do that. So there's no record of me ever doing it. So let's make let's do that. I was a lot more awake when I did that one. But uh, I don't need to have, I don't need to do excuses. Let's, let's move these zoom to 150 and that'll be easier to see. Okay. And then you can enjoy scrolling. That ever in his podcast is going to be unbearable. <laughs> when I enter a room, there shines a blinding light. It is so bright. People shield 
Their eyes I take a step back And pivot around on my feet So everyone can see What I am wearing Shoot a smile to the host at the back of the room Then tip my hat so slowly Man, that's really cool Oh, 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 stare at my moves gleaming smile fancy shoes that's when we go into overdrive overdrive oh, 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 overdrive 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 Just in an overdrive Our dancing comes so naturally We don't even have to try We've got these moves You think they're not cool We don't know how to dance We just carry ourselves in this Overdriven stand so These songs are gonna be like ten minutes each if we do it this slow. <laughs> Is that good? We kind of did okay. all the parts. So yeah. I think that's they're gonna very be good, so very good. They're gonna be so long if we <laughs> if I do each song that slow. Um, we're pretty much we're only doing your songs, right? I mean, we have an a request for "Out in the Rain." That's I, a really old one. Well, right? I don't think I can I could remember how to play that one. Yeah. Even if I did, I don't really feel right playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Enchanting Rain asks, I'm wondering if David remembers Fabricated Blue. Mm, it's yeah. such an amazing song, and there's only one recording on YouTube. Yeah, it's been f going around in different versions ever since we I made it. I, I'm not too happy with how it is now. Um, I want to put it on the future album, but uh, I'm still working on the lyrics, and I just, it's such an old song that I want to update it to make more sense. But uh, I don't mind playing, like, maybe some, some stuff from it. This is in no way reflects on how, if we ever put it on an album, it will be. But mm -hmm. yeah, so this song, we we actually had a version that we played uh, kind of when we were making the transition from Bobo Park to uh, stage shows. And uh, it was back when Upgrade and the John were still in the band. And I think Michael Reed was probably doing some guitars with so us. So is this one that you performed live once? Oh, uh, yeah, once. Wow. Once at, on, at Queen Bee's in San Diego. Like, right when we were starting to get in, I think it was before... Uh, Steve came on board. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty... Really old. And there's, like, one YouTube video that's, like, crappy uh, that was taken by, like, a cell phone. I don't know it was a cell phone at the time. It was probably, like, just a... But, yeah, and it's... You can kind of hear most of it, but... I have, like, so many ideas for this song. It's just... It's not there yet. Oh, thanks. That'll help. Uh, I might... These... I don't even know these, what these lyrics are. It's kind of a, <laughs> a hodgepodge of, like, over the years of me changing stuff, and I, I'm almost... I think it, I'll get to a point where I'm happy with it. The light has fallen and now it seems That all your life is crumbling After all that's been thrown at you It feels there's not much left to Oh, 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 oh hold on to Oh, 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 hold on to And 
so the story goes In the fall and rain It'll be back again Lingering and running off Through your head Dust comes quicker with the clouds You let them hold you back now And tell yourself you're better off Alone in the rain Pick your... Oh, okay, these lyrics I'm not familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just... Oh, God. <clears throat> You tune out all those around Feel the difference somehow See that there is more to life Than what's in your brain There's not an answer for everything Just clear your mind and start clean um, Try to focus on what you need To be happy <laughs> okay. You might think you were fabricated blue. Ooh, but don't think that way. It's not true. I've seen many things. And you're capable of happy wirings. You're not In the falling rain, the truth will hit hard at first. Lightning strikes and reminds you of the worst. Skies are all black and gray, showering you in a haze. All at once you break down and then say, You've never felt this way before. Your body and mind are so sore. Now you're missing out on everything around you You let it all out and cry Not everything will heal inside You try to stand up straight with your head Hell to the sky You might think you were fabricated blue but don't think that way It's not true I've seen many things, things You're capable of happy wirings You're not fabricated But as long as you have me I don't really like that lyric. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, you do this on yourself. You don't need someone else. <laughs> That's how I feel now in life. Different times. The light is falling And now it seems That all your life is crumbling After all that's been thrown at you It feels there's not much left But please, oh, 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 hold on for you. Fabricated blue. Ooh. And if the blue shines on, don't let it alter you. Wait, I can do that better. <laughs> Fabricated blue. And if the blue shines on, don't let it alter you. Too many syllables in that one. If you're fabricated blue, ooh, we can bask in your glow and let it pass through.
What did I do? I think I, I'm spacing, stretching this out too long, but whatever. <laughs> Maybe I should do it all shorter. How is I I I'm intended to be? At least I think that's how I want to do it. Or maybe I'll just cut this part because it's really, really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> And then started like sounds like stupid out of breath. Yeah, well, I'm sitting down, so I can't expand my lungs. I hate singing instead of sitting down because I can't take a breath. Breathe. Um. Anyways, you're not fabricated blue. Oh no no no. Okay, well maybe you are. Anyways, so that's kind of the idea of the song. Uh, acoustically, I don't know. What's 5th of May? Play 5th of May. I don't know. Is that, Fir- is that someone else? 1st of May? Is that oh, someone it, else's? Is that someone else's song? Mu- they <laughs> must just be requesting like an, someone else's song. Uh, I'm not going to do any cover. I don't, don't, don't want to do any coverage just because, you know, we're engineer tears. I don't know. <laughs> well, you want to play stuff that you know, right? Well, that and also, I don't know. I just, I, I don't, we don't need to do licensing stuff for yeah. <laughs> YouTube and all that. That would uh, mean our Bened- our episode couldn't be used yeah. to be monetized or anything. So <laughs> the next two requests were from the Ryan Lehu, if I'm pronouncing that right. Rex Marksley, and I don't have a name for it. I don't know if you've done any of those recently. Uh, I did. I don't have a name for it. I think the last time we did this on the Ben Yeah, yeah. So if you want to hear that one, pull up the la- next last one that was that only... Uh, I think uh Yeah, the last one that just you and I did. I think you played that one. Okay, this one's going to be in here. I'm going to have to make a new document for it, but it'll be worth it since I don't have a Oh wait, we have it on the engineer tour side, I think. I'm I pr- probably know how to play it, but it's probably good to have a uh, Probably good to have a reference. We haven't played this one in a while. <laughs> like well, yeah. <laughs> Log into the, Bene- uh, the engineer tier site so I can pull up the chords that I uh, have on there. <laughs> uh, no. Have we been going for an hour and a half already? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we got. I feel like we've half we played, hour left. We played two songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked a lot, I guess. Well, whatever. I mean, I'm tired. It's not like I. I'm not gonna give a great performance, anyways. And look at all this dead space that I'm. We have with this. Uh, well, not every episode can be golden. Every thirty. Thanks are. for tuning in, y'all. Lots of people have requested diamonds too, but I don't know if you want to play that one. Nah, because then we can't. We oh, that's right. Covers. Yeah. Sorry. Because this is going on. I think YouTube we have though later. before, because but then we it's like you know you have to like you have I to, know you have to set that video like as Periscope and stuff. But well, yeah. it's those aren't saved. This so. is going on YouTube later, so. The, well, the other one was too, but I you know I didn't sure. I didn't monetize that one. Yeah. It, well, it, if it did, it was be, it was because we played it as a cover song and it detected it. But I don't know. Okay, I'm I kind of I know how to play this one. I just wanted to see what key it was in. Super. Uh, oh. oh, oh. It's been a while, but I can try Rex Marksley. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if I play this one sitting down. With the, but when sitting down, like I'm a little hunched over, and uh, it's hard on the lungs, right? Yeah. Well, because uh, you know, if you're I don't chest breathe, I I belly breathe like it's supposed to, and you can't really. It's hard sitting down, mm-hmm. especially when you're like crashed over to a microphone. I've never done. I've never never played like that mm-hmm. in my life. <clears throat> Plus, I have back problems, so sitting is not for me. <laughs> I really don't. One. Two. Oh boy, this one's t- this one's high, isn't it? <laughs> Two. I know my voice is like really deep today because 
Do it. Mm. Can you do a deep version? It's a big octave jump. We'll see. We'll try. Legs falling asleep. <laughs> I like. I like. I like. This one starts slow. We'll do lullaby version. Rex Marksley, finest marksman in the West. Rex Marksley, when it came to gunslinging, he was the best. Rex Marksley at a younger age Shot holes in cans without a missing Sadly they were in the pantry So Beans painted the whole darn kitchen His parents then let him shoot The empty cans out on the fence But Rex Trick shot out all the nails So at the fence all their cows went his father cried, Rex Marksley, finest marksman in the West. Rex Marksley, when it came to gunslinging, he was the best. Rex Marksley was a tinkerer and engineer extraordinaire. He made quick reloading gadgets so he could fire non-stop with panache and flare. He became a gun for hire and a hero wherever he roamed. He disarmed 40 bandits one time with two gunshots all on his own. Finest is taking all my energy. <laughs> oh. It sounds like I'm being lazy, but I'm tired yeah. enough that this is tough. Steam Power Draft <laughs> Lullaby Album. Marksley, when it came to gunslinging, he was the best. He had heart and righteous down. And they tell of his stories across the land. He jammed the guns that fired his way by shooting bullets into their barrels. They Lightning from his hands with his miraculous invention And zap that evil demon train back to its own dimension That giant copper or golem, oh it was a fry Projectile pickaxes with dynamite. He fought the corrupt rattlesnake king in it east in agony. Then Rex taught all the jackalopes to yodel in harmony. I just need to see the chords. I, I all this time I thought you were looking at the ones under the line. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean I know how to play the song, and I think I've played it a few hundred times, based on the zoo alone. But you know, I'm tired, and I got excuses for days. So are we doing this yodeling part? <laughs> Am I finishing the song? Is this a good place to stop? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have time for more. Sure. Right? I could fall asleep right now <laughs> no no one wants to watch a live stream where you're struggling to stay awake or or, or tired no, no one wants to watch you struggle in general so <laughs> so i i apologize if this audio is hard to listen to or if the video is hard to watch well Whoa! isn't there like a whole podcast that someone does dedicated to like 
making people helping them fall asleep so you're by being by being sleepy themselves (laughs) yeah so you're just doing a nice sleepy version Uh. for listen to this one while you fall asleep okay let's do one more song and then how about we answer some questions okay do you want like a (laughs) do you want to do like a slow song that'd be the easiest um uh we've got a request for on a crescendo would that be possible I think I've done that. Did that one before? Yeah. It wasn't that last stream too. There's a me and my baby, scary world. She said maybe. Um, Those are ooh Star Valley Nights. I don't think I've done ever done that one. Yeah, let's do, let's do, let's that. do that, okay, one. I've that's, that one. I've probably done that. That's from the same person who requested crescendo. So, I love Star Valley Nights. Doesn't get enough love from like. Fans. Well, we've never performed it live either. Yeah. So. And this is actually a fast song, so. Pretty simple chord progression. It's like the same two chords for like the verse. Uh, yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, what's coming up. Let's see. Tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn will be released Ooh. for the PlayStation 4. PlayStation exclusive post-apocalyptic game. Uh, third person kind of uh, open world game where it's a little little different in the the post apocalyptic is like set I don't know how many years in the future from the fall of mankind but everyone's kind of very tribal but they use technology still and there's robot dinosaurs and animals that run around and and it's very cool aesthetically looks gorgeous getting great reviews and apparently it performs really well on PS4 so that's that's going to be exciting I picked that one up hey if you're a PlayStation fan uh, you should definitely sign up for Sony Rewards. It's free, and if any time you make like purchases on the PlayStation Store, it gives you points. And yeah, it might take a while, but eventually you can get enough points where you can just redeem like a ten dollar uh, PlayStation Network card, so you can buy more PlayStation games, or you can actually get other gift cards from Sony Rewards. This podcast not endorsed by I'm Sony just, PlayStation. I just I've <laughs> used it for years, and you know I also like, no, I just I went and got I like a PlayStation a, a PlayStation credit mm-hmm. card because I bought I I buy video games a lot on PlayStation. I mean I use. I do buy most of my games on Steam because I'm a PC gamer, but for any of the exclusives I, I or stuff that's like, you know, a platformer or 2D that doesn't really require, I'll, I'll buy it on a console just because sometimes it's easier. Or if everyone else is playing on console, I'll buy a game like that way. But uh, I have a PlayStation credit card, and uh, and that like gives you like 10 times the points if you use it. So I only use my PlayStation credit card to buy buy the PlayStation games that yeah. I'm already going to buy pay for anyway, so... It kind of is like a cycle where, you like every few months, I games. I have enough like to buy another fifty, sixty dollar game with nice. just the stuff, and I it's totally worth it if you're already spending money on the PlayStation Store. It's completely free, and there's, you know, it's just it's uh, for them. It's an incentive to like for you to keep buying PlayStation stuff. But I didn't realize they didn't have a rewards account with them until like last week. You wasted all these years. I of, know mm. all these years of buying video. But games. anyways, yeah, go to Sony Rewards and. And oh yeah, you can redeem like movie tickets and like if you have a bunch of Blu-rays from, and you can you can enter all the UPC codes of your Sony movies and get points and I'm sure you'll you'll be on your way to a free <laughs> game or or anything else. It's not just they'll reward you with anything. I think I'll it's, be picking up Horizon tomorrow. It's a pretty non-intrusive rewards program that is great if you're a PlayStation person. <laughs> me and my girl went down to the fields to see what we could see. One thousand degrees it was in my my It was sunny and bright and bright. We couldn't find any shade for several miles around us. I crowd up for rain or just for a nice tall glass of iced lemonade. Lemonade. I would have given anything for that day to turn into a night. A night. As we laid in the fields, I looked up and shouted with all my, 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 my. I had kicked down the sun for a Star Valley night. I 
passing I ain't kicked down the sun for a star valley night I ain't star valley night Opening a box on my 11th birthday I received a telescope I was so excited I went outside with it to play What a day I improvised that part Is that, is that good? Yeah That wasn't the How Disney song <laughs> Just go with it <laughs> <laughs> You were gonna fall asleep <laughs> I stopped dead in my tracks When I realized the sun was casting all its rays across the sky Masking all the stars For oh, the stars I would have given anything For that day to turn into a night A night I sat up with my telescope and shouted with all my my I on that part. My my I'd kick down the sun for a star valley night. I said I'd kick down the sun for. That kind of gives it the the real the recording version because it has that. There's a lot of instruments in this one. Star Valley Night. Star Valley Night. Might as well finish this one. <laughs> it is. This is one of my favorite songs on Vice Quadrant. Walking down this. No, wait. Do I ever sing it high? Do I always do it low? I can't remember. It's been a while. High. Do I no, even do it in this low. key? No, Sorry, I meant low. Walking down the street, headed towards the end, you... Oh, I don't have the chords down here. I, I was, like, copying. I'm so stupid. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, I know. It's only two chords. I said it myself. Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah. Walking down the street, headed towards the end, you are circus. I saw an elephant escape a tent and overturn a can of Shot a clown several blocks away into a factory. And that factory was filled with fireworks, and they all went off at once. At once, I would have given anything for that day to turn into a night. As multicolored lights exploded in the blue sky, I cried, I cried. I'd kick down the sun for a far valley night. Can't even get through the one chorus. <laughs> I'd kick down the sun for a Star Valley What's that G doing there? <laughs> it's in the right like corn. <laughs> Me and my girl went down to the fields to scream at the sun. Go away. Go away. I'd kick down the sun for a star valley. I don't have enough breath to get through it. <laughs> I'd kick down the sun for a... You 
to sing the next one? Star Valley Night. You sing one. Uh, just adding a chorus on the end. Just right here. Just do the I Kick Down Sun. Just I can't go that low. You sing a high. <laughs> I, that? Uh, I kick down the sun for us. Wait, I did the wrong <laughs> chord. Sorry. One, two, three, four. I kick down the sun for a Star Valley night. <laughs> I, I, I sail. I'd kick down the sun. Ah, I did the wrong chord. Uh, okay. One more time. I'm trying my One, best. Two, three, four. I'd kick down the. Huh. I'll do mine, then you do yours. We'll be good. We'll be good. I'm okay. We'll just be doing octaves, but we'll be good. I'd okay, and yours. I'd kick down the sun for a Star Valley night. I said, I'd kick down the sun for a Star Valley night. Star Valley night. <laughs> I. I, my the melody was a little off. But my whatever. normal voice is pretty <laughs> low for. Can you do the don't lower? Like, what does that sound like? A female voice, I like people have lower voices than me. But when I sing, like it's hard for me to go high. I yeah, sing that. Let's see. Let's, let's do that. But then that's really low for it's me. Okay. It'll only Kinda be. Like it'll only be on voice. YouTube and everywhere for the rest of your life. Oh my god. Let's do it. One, two, <laughs> three, four. I kick down the sun for a Star Valley night. I can't do that wavery thing. It's tough. But, okay, that's a song. <laughs> I really like that song. I always, it reminds me of a, um, mm. just, I don't know why, something about it reminds me of a Paul McCartney song. I really like it. I like the bass in that song. Yeah. That might be, that might be why it sounds very McCartney-ish to me. It's like, that bass part could be the song. <laughs> it kind of is. Um, do you, uh, do you have any more questions that are that before we we sign off? Um, we've gone almost to two hours, and oh, I wish I was more awake for all of you. Uh, maybe the, maybe the singing the songs and stuff was a bad idea for this podcast, but. Maybe maybe some of you will be listening to this as you drift off to sleep. I I don't know. I I kind of have run out of questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I have some saved from previous weeks, but I never ask them because they're kind of like ones that we get all the time and that kind of stuff. Like, um, what's the inspiration for your characters? You know, the the hero songs, that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's anything you really want to answer, like, real quick at the end. Oh, I recognize that one. I don't think it's in the right key. That's my favorite song on SteamWorld Heist. <laughs> if you guys can recognize it. That's not the right. not the right key no. my fingering <laughs> aren't working well i'm not really a guitar player it's just it's just a, it's a means to an end for the group but if anyone on the engineer tier chat which i'm looking at right now has any last minute questions otherwise i think we're just about out of time we got nine minutes left apologies again if we sound really sleepy we are so should the title of this one be spg <laughs> Sleepy Time Spectacular. Wait, what's that? It's a Beatles song. <laughs> like oh, that that's <laughs> why I recognize it. I i actually, um, <laughs> I had a Beatles album, song stuck in my head earlier today. I was like humming it in the car. I used to know how to play it on the ukulele, but I forgot. It's um, I'll Follow the Sun. Can you oh. play that one? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I used to um, be able to play it on the ukulele, like strum a little bit and sing it a long time uh, ago. I feel like I'm like Bugs Bunny in that when like kind of <laughs> playing that. <laughs> 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 and I can't hit the last Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the, the Yosemite Sam yeah. piano episode? And then 
feels like. This is this is like a song that they teach you in like guitar. I took one guitar class in college, and I was like, "This isn't for me," like, and I just kept just playing rhythm guitar. <laughs> and that one of it because it uses a lot of like scales and stuff on that. Got a few last minute questions. One for me. And, uh, I don't know how that goes. One for me what is: <laughs> Would you and Camille be willing to sing on stage? Sure. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just answer for you. I can't speak for Camille. Um, I don't think she's as enthusiastic about singing live she led some vocals for marshmallow world but like um i don't know if she'd want to sing live but i would definitely be up for trying it um because we've had people ask about like oh if they did soliton would you be singing and that kind of stuff and um i would definitely be willing to try i'm not gonna say i wouldn't be nervous as all hell because it's not really my forte but i'm sure i'd be up for it yeah we don't have any we don't have enough wireless equipment to bring we'd have to bring even more to have yeah. them sing on stage unfortunately yeah. and we already, we already i mean for like one little tiny part it would you know i think like ugh, i don't think it'd be worth the effort to give me like iems and stuff like that and it's a little it's just so much work for such we a small do have thing. we do have an extra set of iems as a backup yeah. that we used for carolina when she played bass on a oh, i have a hiccup still uh I, I mean camille are like on a constantly running around and like you know we have to change for one of the songs and stuff like that so i don't know but who knows you know the act can grow yeah uh david do you have a favorite john song to like play or i don't know if they mean play i mean or yeah when, i mean when he did it i liked juju magic but that mm. was the song written by mike and john a lot of mike's mike a lot of songs from john were mike too uh, the, the ones that were on the album that we never played live little birdie and stuff and then we probably tried to play it once live or something but uh mm. those are all just john last minute throwing something on the album and we're like oh so we don't get any input <laughs> But uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only one that I, I mean, I've liked Out in the Rain too. But it that it's it was so. I like Out in the Rain. Not much for anyone else Listening to do other to than <laughs> John. I don't know song, about so. playing it, but um. But no, I mean, I had I had nothing to do with that song. Yeah. And Mike did Juju Magic. And that. I mean, you know, playing it live, we all have something to do. Mm -hmm. We create stuff, parts and stuff to do. But no, that's sounded. I didn't never really like Sound Tomorrow. Um. Oh, question pertaining to the YouTube concert you might want to answer. Um, can they use PayPal? Um, yeah, so uh, just to make sure everyone, like if they want to, because we're going to have like a tip thing set up. Uh, there's going to be the YouTube Super Chat. I don't know if you've seen that new feature. I think we talked about this a little bit on the last Benetarium. But basically it's like YouTube takes 70% of any money that people do, uh, donate on the Super Super Chat. And Super Chat basically you can pay money and it's like a little dollar sign right in the in the chat bar when there's a live stream going on YouTube. And you can type your message, and but depending on how much you pay, like it it shows it to the to us like immediately, and then it shows it for everyone in the chat for longer, like it stays up there. So and the more you pay, the longer it stays up, and yeah. so it's like a way, you know, I don't know I don't, it's it's YouTube's, and we get seventy percent right. of it. So if you give us a dollar, we get seventy cents basically. And also, no, I know we touched on this before, but like um, when you were doing the test stream on YouTube, I was not able to see the super chat on my iPhone. Well, you can see what the, what you can see that you can see the people that have, the, you can see the yeah. super chat that yeah, people can, other do, but you, you can't can see you, the you, submissions. Yeah. You can't actually use it when you're using an iPhone. Yeah. Like, like there's no way right now currently to, to use super chat yourself if you're using the iPhone app, uh, but it works on Android and PC and Mac and stuff. But uh, uh, it because of that, and you can only pay with a credit card on that. So, and once again, they take, YouTube takes 30% of off out of the, <laughs> whatever you, whatever you give us through super chat. So uh, we're also going to set up a donation thing on our store, and that store will let you pay with a credit card, your Amazon account, or PayPal. So, and that then I mean it it won't be as easy as like Super Chat because the Super Chat's built right into YouTube. But we'll we'll have a link you know somewhere on the live stream, and you click it, and then you just check out, and hopefully that's good enough. And and people who want to use Super Chat, that's great. Just know that you're giving 30 percent of whatever you give us to. YouTube, which is fine, you know, they're gonna run ads and stuff on it, but that's what that's gonna be. Should we, uh, we should end this. That's pretty much it. I'm starting to drone on, and I'm sure my monotonous voice is becoming. Listen to another Ben and Tamer episode, one where we're like super energetic. <laughs> we'll probably get back into the role playing the next time we have Bunny on, because um, yeah. that's always fun. It's it's the most popular part of any of these podcasts when we look at the data. Like that's the part that people play, <laughs> and, wow. then, and then they kind of just tune out after that. Well, it, I mean, but I don't care. Whatever. You Some do people it in the it beginning, so, yeah. so that's why. So here's where we go. I don't that's remember true. what song you played in the beginning. It was a new one. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what. Uh, I think it was here. So let's just do another one. 
Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's you just, do another one. <laughs> yeah. I guess. My brain's like, what are you trying to do? You just, you did all this work all the weekend. Why are you trying to be creative now? Uh, we've, a- we've answered the favorite dinosaur thing a lot. Mine would be like a velociraptor for carnivore. For herbivore, Parasaurolophus. like a like an itunes commercial <laughs> <laughs> what? or apple like one of those commercial. pop songs yeah whatever really go with it. So good to me, so good to everyone that we had on. But now it's time to go. Whoop de doo. <laughs> Benetarium, only people listen to the role playing element every single time. I can see it in the data. They even skip the intro song sometimes. They only care about the role playing when we're rolling the dice. What if I told you that? I was just making up the dice rolls anyways. Doesn't matter what it landed on. As long as it's above 10, it happens. Easiest way to role play a tabletop game. You don't need stats. You don't need a character sheet. That's only fun for people who actually like RPGs. And that's not usually anyone on the planetarium except for me, maybe Bunny. But everyone else is indifferent. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I like I like number the Crichton. I mean, I need to the be. Whole in, I just point, need to lay in bed. The whole point of starting the Benetarium was so that you didn't have to be in performance mode. Well. Right. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I'm glad we got up and did something today. It's I mean, good. I still have to build the PC today too. So, but I, you know, that doesn't require me to be like on a <laughs> camera or recording our voice. But I mean, you know, usually. I mean, we move the Benetarium to a Monday because it's always tiring. If we ever have to, we'll move it to a Tuesday if we're way too tired after a show because I don't know how entertaining these we're all tired and we all sound lethargic is. I mean, you sound okay, I guess. I'm, I'm only judging myself. I'm not judging. I'm not judging I'm, Chelsea. I'm fueled by a drug, though. I had coffee. <laughs> and I had is that one, really I had admirable? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyways, that's the... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, any of the, any thanks of the, for tuning in, everyone. Any of those songs better than the uh, the original Benetarium? Probably not, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Keeping it real. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Uh, not sure what day. Maybe Monday again. Uh, yeah. Keep an eye ear out on our Twitter, uh, Benetaria, the Benetarium, and uh, Engineer Tier site, if you're an Engineer Tier. My hair slowly got poofier as the stream went on because my hair was wet when we started. It was like raining outside and stuff, and now it's like if you did like a time lapse of the video, it would be like. Bye. Bye. <laughs>